Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Tool Tutorials, where I'm going to be creating a uh, quick tutorial guide and I'm going to be creating a set of tutorials on how you guys can use the Unity game engine to create a house that is three-dimensional and can have the great interior that um, you choose. So basically, once you start up the Unity engine, it should look something like this. And of course, after you've done the logins and everything and creating an account and verifying it through email, things like that, um, eventually you should be linked to this. Uh, and so basically here, you this is your basic starting menu screen. So for here, I have some projects, but it should be blank for you. So what you should just do is you click new. So we're going to start off a new project, of course, because we're going we're gonna to be creating a brand new house. So name it whatever you want. I'm going to be uh, calling it uh, house project. And then you can pick wherever you want it to be located. You can put it on your desktop if you want it uh, to have easier access to it. Um, yeah, the freedom is yours at this part, basically. You can also write your name here. And, uh, remember to click 3D, because we're going to be making a 3D, uh, house. Uh, yeah, sure, just enable the Unity, uh, analytics, uh, analytics, sorry. So, uh, yeah, then once you're ready, just create your project. So, once you're loaded in, it should bring you to a screen like this. This may look really complicated. When I started off first with Unity, I was like... What is this? Oh my gosh. So basically, there's there. It, it's not that complicated. We're actually going to not use quite a bit of features uh, that's on this page because we're just going to be creating a basic house. If you're going to create something advanced like an actual game, uh, you would probably use some of these advanced features. So let me just walk you through it. So there's um, first on the ball uh, on this top area here, this top bulk, uh, you have some different options. Uh, and these are just uh, your basic menu, like file, you can save your project, you can save a scene, you can open one, things like that. Here you have some options um, for the uh, when you're actually editing within the software. So you can import new packages, import um, different items, game objects, you can create objects while you're in the Unity Builder. Things like that, all the good stuff, all the tools that you'll need to make uh, something in Unity. So, uh, first off, if you look over at this top left corner, you have five little uh, blocks over at this, this bar here. So, the first one uh, is actually a hand, and this is just used, uh, actually first, um, I'll explain that later so I can show you in the actual engine. So first, here you have three different things. You have the asset store, the game, and the scene. The asset store is where you can get all your assets, your, your objects, so basically, in Unity, you're not forced to make your own objects. Instead, there is an endless library of pre-made objects that people in the community and the Unity Studio have made themselves, which you can download or buy, but be, we're sticking to some of the free things because there's actually a lot of free things out there that are really useful. Next, you have the game. So this actually shows off what it's like if you were playing the game, but we're not gonna actually be using that because we're not gonna make this a game. We're just gonna make a 3D environment. So what we're actually gonna be using is scene. So this is actually your scene. So um, this is where you're going to be making your house. If you use the scroll, you can zoom in and out. And basically, this is like an endless void of, um, of landscape that you can use to create your environment. So the, you can notice there's a little sun here. This is actually the, light, uh, the lighting. So because this um, Unity software has really advanced lighting, you actually can uh, choose different kinds of lighting. The sun uh, basically creates light, uh, light over the entire landscape, much like the sun. And then here you have a camera, which is actually, we're not gonna really going to use that, but that's used for the actual in-game function of what the person that's playing uh, a game that you developed would see. So what we're going to um, start off with is, uh, now that I'm going to talk about the, the um, boxes over here in the top left. So first off, you have hand, and this is used for moving around. You see, I'm using the hand and I'm holding click, and I can move around. And this is just for moving around the scene. Let's say I was building something here and I got to move over here. I just drag and move myself. You can also use the arrow keys, uh, which is very useful um, because I tend to use this rather than having to go all the way to the top left and switching because it's a lot easier. Then next, I have the move feature. So this is actually used for moving. So basically, this works in X, Y, and Z, this uh, Unity. They tend to work in X, Y, and Z. So when you click on an object, you use the red to move the X, blue to move the Z, and green to move the Y. And this is, of course, up, down, left, right, and then uh, same for blue, but in the other dimension. So length, height, and width. Uh, and uh, then the next thing are these rotating tools, and this is used for rotating objects. You can see, this is actually the sunlight rays that you can see. Let me actually spawn an object right now. So I'm going to go to game object, 
3D object in cube. So I'm just using this to show off to you guys some of the features. So I'm gonna move this cube up a bit using the movement, um, uh, using the movement cursor over here. And another feature is that if you hold right click, you can actually look around. And this is useful if you want to get different angles, if you want to uh, look around your object some more detail, detail, or um, just get um, better sight of different objects. So as you can see, I can use the, my hand to, to look around the cube, move around the, the scene. I can use the arrow to move the cube around using X, Y, and Z, as X, Y, and Z, sorry. And then I can use the arrows to rotate objects like this. You, same for the rotations X, Y, and Z. You can rotate them upside down, you can rotate them left and right, all that good stuff. Then you have this one, and this is actually used for changing the shape of the cube. Let's say the cube is too wide, or it's not the, uh, quite the way you like it. You can actually move the X, Y, and Z dimensions the way that you want them, so that the, the size can actually be properly done, and that you can um, increase the size or change the dimensions the way you like. And then next is just, this is uh, almost the same thing, but it's just rotating in sort of a three-dimensional proportion. So you can essentially, uh, right now I'm holding the shift key, right? Let's say I want to enlarge an object, but keep it exactly proportional so nothing changes. I simply hold the shift, click one of these blue buttons in the corner, which are actually the movement, um, the cropping features. So if I want to crop this corner, I pull on this side, just like that, see? So I'm going to hold shift. And when I do, and I drag it, see it expands it, the, in, but keeps it in the same proportion for me. So that's a great feature if you want to enlarge objects, but keep them the same. Which is what uh, I use a lot for when objects are too small or too large. So, um, yeah, that's that covered. And uh, just like I showed you, if you want to spawn in objects, you can go game object and insert an object. You can insert a uh, 2D object or a 3D object. Uh, I'm, in a, when you're making the house, you're not really going to use these too much because you're going to use a lot of the pre-made objects that people have already made for you. So I'm going to go into that now. Um, also, one thing I'm just going to quickly uh, highlight is over on this top left here, you can actually see um, all of your objects right now. So right now, I only have three objects in right now. I have my camera, which is for the game. Uh, I have the light, which is of course the little sun, and the cube, which is the thing I just spawned in. So if you ever wanted to change anything, let's say I don't want this camera, I just right click on it and I have all these options. I can, uh, I can insert a new object, like a cube, or I can turn it into a cube uh, using that. I can uh, turn it into basically any object, or you could just do some of the basic options of copying it and pasting it. Of course, there's the shortcut command Z, command V for copying and pasting, uh, but I'm simply just going to delete it because I will not need this camera because I'm not going to be making a game. So now that we've covered the basics of uh, actual objects, I'm going to show you um, all of the basics down here. This is basically where all the, magics ha the whole, all the magic happens for the objects that you get. So there's four different kinds of things you can have in Unity, four kinds of things you can place in your environment. Materials, models, prefabs, and scripts. Models are objects, like the cube uh, that I just placed in earlier, that's actually a model. But it's blank white, it's just uh, a white cube, There's there. it doesn't have any colors, uh, nothing like that. So let's say I wanted to give it a color, I could uh, select and find a material through the asset store, and then drag and drop it on the cube and it would give it a material, and it would basically make it look different. Then there's prefabs and scripts, we're not going to be using those, those are uh, more complex and more advanced, they're used for actually designing games, and uh, the coding, and things like that, uh, used for, uh, in actual games. So, uh, right now as you can see, I'm on models, right, so I don't have anything, this is a brand, brand uh, new uh, environment that I haven't done anything on. So, how do I add some new stuff? If you look here at search, I have assets, selected folders, and assets store. So the assets is just, well, assets, these are the things that I've downloaded or just have in my library. Selected folders are stuff that you have specifically selected or have put in folders. And then there's the asset store. This is where you get everything from. As you can see, there's, there's just a complete scroll of objects that I can um, download. So, uh, yeah, right now it's slowly spawning some things in, but essentially these are just some base objects. Uh, that are most popular. So as you can see, there's a search bar here, T model. Keep that. Basically, that's just uh, sort of the searching code for that you want to search for a model. Let's say I want something specific, right? I'm going to search for, uh, I don't know, a chair. Let's search up chair, okay? 
And look at that. I go to free assets. These are the free ones, and then there's also paid assets. These are the paid ones. Look how many free assets there are of chairs. There's regular untextured, there's wheelchairs, wooden chairs, there's um, beanbag chairs, there's padded chairs, rotatable chairs, there's almost endless possibilities. So, I actually kind of like this, um, this rotatable chair right here. So what I do, right, let's say I want to download this because a lot of times these models come in packs. So basically, you find your object that you like, you right click on it, okay, and it should say show an asset store window. Click that. And then this new window pops up, and it brings you from the scene from the scene to the asset store, like we were earlier. But it brings me to the specific asset asset store of this chair. So uh, I'm gonna give it a second to load in. So here you see this is the actual uh, um, the asset that I can download for free. Uh, it's called Chair FP1. It's um, it's basically a free model from the furniture pack. So essentially, let's say I want to look at this whole furniture pack. I can just click on that, but it brings me to a browser. So I'm not really going to go into that right now. But okay, so I want to download this chair. You just quickly click the, simply click the blue download button. And then you give it a minute and it's going to download this file for you. Okay, so once it's been downloaded, it should start decrypting things. This little window pops up where it's preparing the actual package. Um, and it's preparing to import it into your actual Unity uh, engine. So then this window should pop up. And this, this is basically um, where you choose what you want. So as you can see, there's many options. This little blue ball, it actually means materials. So whenever you see anything with a blue ball, that means that it's a material. These are uh, images, and then that's the actual object because it has the object symbol. So this is everything in the package. Let's say I don't want the material because I don't like the material. I'll just untick it. But I tend to just download everything because these guys make really detailed textures that are specifically made for these chairs. Like this shadow over here, if you can see, there's like a shadow under the chair. You would normally not have that. And that's because the texture has actually modeled that shadow in. So I tend to just uh, select everything like it is. And then oh, you just go down to the bottom right and click import. And then that's when it's going to start importing the entire file that you just downloaded into your engine. So you just give it a minute. And then once it's ready, uh, you, sh you go back from asset store over to scene over here. And then once you go to assets, you can see there's actually my chair. That's the chair. So I'm going to drag this in. And would you look at that? I have a chair spawned into my scene, the chair that I downloaded. But you can see it's really plain, right? It's just pure white. There's no textures on it, nothing. So like I said earlier, I'm going to go to materials. And as you can see, there's the chair material that I downloaded, that, he that the designer made for this chair. So I just drag it onto the chair. And look at that. The chair now has sort of a padded uh, material to it and a padded texture. And so this is essentially what you're going to do with all of your objects uh, uh, for the interior of your house. And you can do this for any object. You can go to models, asset store, and I can search up something as simple as wall. And once I do, all of these walls pop up. There's even walls for windows, walls for doors, windows for these window walls. There's door handles. There's The possibilities are almost endless. So now all you have to do is just download them, import them, and play around with them. That's all I'm going to be covering for this tutorial. I hope you guys uh, learned something new from this tutorial and the basics of how to spawn objects in your environment and how to download them off the asset store. Uh, stay tuned for more of these tutorials and uh, I hope you learned something and uh, enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.